Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Finally getting around to doing the May Garden Tour. I mean, I guess it is. It's basically right when I'm supposed to be doing the tour, so didn't fall behind there. We're doing close-up shots because I want to do these things in sections. It rained all month and was very cool outside, so productivity was, I don't want to say low, I got a lot done, but because of the cool wet weather, I wasn't able to bring as many plants out as I had hope to. Look at there's just one cute little tiny cloud hanging out back there. What are these blue skies? I haven't seen these in so long. Normally this time of year I'd have all my tropicals moved out and they'd be getting put where they need to go. You know you have to do it slowly. They need to go into the shade for a while and then slowly bump them up. But the storms and the cool weather, I still have a lot of plants inside. So uh, things haven't been uh, arranged in any kind of way. Things are still hardening off and being moved around. I still have piles of plants hanging out ready to be planted. I was just waiting for the rain to go away. It looks like it's not going to rain next week. So I'm going to be able to get a lot done. But next week is June. The tour is now. I stressed quite a bit over the last week about trying to get everything done. Like thinking that I would catch up on three weeks worth of work in like the two days we had that didn't have rain. That's not happening. The garden's a mess. It's fine. It's not a big deal. To think of a garden as a infinite canvas. <laughs> it's just, you're always painting, you're always creating, always working on it, and that's just, that's, y'all are gonna get a taste of some of that madness right now. And I'm going to do this maybe even a little bit vlog style. For starters, look at what's going on right here. This is my uh, mother and daughter's, that's what it's called, the mother and daughter Croton. Weird name. I think I've also heard it called like the Spoon Croton. It's one of my favorites. I've had this one for a long time. It gets that name, Mother and Daughter, because it has these leaves on it that have these little baby leaves that come out over the ends there, which I'm sure you'd see better if my hand wasn't in the way. Isn't it a pretty plant? It doesn't always have those little bits that come off of it that's generally on the more <laughs> mature foliage, but it's a fun plant. Really unique foliage. Like I said, I've had this one for a very long time and it's in need for a repot. That's probably going to be a trend of things I say in this video. I have a very big list of plants that are going to get repotted this year. Then over here, this is the skip laurel berm. I planted these up last summer and I put them in here really mostly for privacy because there's like, there's just, there's people everywhere over there. I don't want to see them. I want to think I'm like in my own little paradise when I'm back here. And look at how great they're doing. All that new growth, that beautiful bright green new foliage that's coming out on them. They've gotten very big. I didn't realize they were going to put on this much growth in their first year. That's one thing that's pretty interesting about this unusual weather we've had here for the month of May. This really cool and consistently moist with lots of precipitation. We haven't had a ton of like really bad aggressive storms which is really nice but just that consistent moisture in the cool weather has spurred some pretty extreme growth out of some plants that typically wouldn't put on this kind of growth, not here in this location. Maybe other areas, coastal areas, places that get a good amount of moisture. We get a good amount of rain here, but not consistently the way it's been. It was very misty. We had plenty of downpours, and there were a few days where we had a few inches within a few hours, but otherwise it was just very misty. And the plants absolutely loved it. So even though I couldn't really be out here and get a ton done as much as I would like to, I'm okay with it. Because the plants, they really responded to that extreme moisture. Look at the pedicets. Yeah, right through the Adansoni, right back there. Pedicets japonicus. These got absolutely massive. We'll take things around the other side so you can get a better look at this berm. Get a better look at these nasty old chase lounges weren't in the way. I'm gonna move those actually. There we go. There's a slightly less obstructed view. Turns out these don't stack, so that's good to know. Minus the pile of furniture that needs to be cleaned off over there. Look at just how big and glorious these plants have gotten. These Pedicets japonicus, typically here it's warm enough and sunny enough they don't usually get, for me, they've never gotten over maybe a foot and a half tall at like the absolute max. But it, you know, cool weather and precipitation makes a really big difference in how well they are going to perform. And look at what they've done here. It's actually 
a bit much. Chances are when things heat up here in the next week or so, when the heat that should have been here in May finally shows up in June, these will start to decline, unfortunately. These typically, these and like the ostrich ferns, which I'll show in a little bit, they do great in the springtime. They emerge early. They add a lot of interest, a lot of texture, a lot of color. I mean, they're just really neat looking plants. However, when it gets really warm outside, they tend to go on the decline and that's okay because then I usually just fill the area in with some other things if I feel like it. The leaves on these are absolutely massive and really cool looking too, right? Just for scale, the skip laurels that are in the back there are about five feet tall. So things on a slope and it is curved because the patio's curved, which is hard to see because everything's been hidden by all that furniture for so long. I'm not going to get rid of this furniture, but I don't lay out. Like, that's not a... I get bored just laying around. I would rather be sitting and, like, reading or doing something on my phone or swimming, potentially. But I don't like to just, like, be like a beached whale. I don't know. That doesn't appeal to me. Anytime I've ever been to the beach just sitting there, I get so bored. I have to, like, dig a hole or something. So, like, all of this just seems unnecessary to me. And I looked into replacing these cushions. Oh, my gosh. Chase Lounge cushions? Very, very expensive. I don't, and these don't need to be replaced is the thing. I don't want to buy new ones if I don't need to. And other people who come over here like to lounge and lay out. But this is not an acceptable... I can't, like, this isn't permanent. That looks terrible. So, ideally, I would have ones that stack and just have some cushions in the garage. But, I don't know. I'll figure something else out down there. Because I actually do like this <laughs> openness that's over here. Obviously, this would be more maintained and more clean if it didn't have furniture in front of it at all times like this does. Also, I just discovered there's a pot down there that I've been looking for. I got eaten by the pedicets. These, I've talked about them in other videos before, other garden tours. <laughs> the plan with these wasn't for them to get this big. Because like I said, they typically don't get this big here. But um, they're happy. They're feeling themselves this year. And that's fine. There is a little pathway in here that's now gone. So I'm going to need to clear that out. And uh, something I've been thinking about doing, it's not going to happen this year. But at some point, some day, I would like to actually extend this entire berm out. And then have it come up this hill a little bit. Down around that oak, back up to the fence line. And then have a little like a different type of hedge go all the way down that fence line. And then I would allow these to go ahead and just do their thing. Just have this field of colorful, big, bold foliage. The only thing that's not so great about them is the leaves get damaged very, very easily. Well, that is just beautiful. Yeah, they have very delicate foliage. So like if there's hail or anything, they get filled with holes. They're more sheltered over here. So it's not really something that I've had to worry about as much as ones that I've had planted in the past in a different garden bed that I'll show you later. I don't have these over there anymore. They've all been moved over here for the most part. The combination of pedicets over here, there's the variegated ones down here, the variegatus, and then these up here, which I think I've called Gigante or Gigantus. They're actually curly Q or something like that. I'm not sure if they were renamed or what happened because I have my invoice for the plants and then they're still being sold by the same place as the same plant with the same description, but with a different name so i don't know what's going on there but their foliage is curly so i'll give them that uh, ideally this whole area would be just the variegated ones because that's kind of what i wanted over here i talk about it all the time i like having variegated plants in the shade because it draws the eyes back it lights up it illuminates and it, there's just something beautiful about it this i mean it can be overdone for sure but as far as in a berm like this where it's very very shady that's a beautiful thing. That's the berm over here. I'm really rolling the dice by talking over here for this long. We have these blackbirds here called grackles. And when I stand over here, they poop on me. So I'm gonna move on to another area. I'm really pushing my luck as it is, but just one last moment, take it all in. I know, it's like a lot, and it was never intended to be this big. Like I said, normally these would all be about a foot shorter. It's a very happy spring for them. And over here, just around the corner, this is just kind of a shade area where I'm moving plants out and letting them acclimate and adjust and get used to the light before I move them onto another area. This is in, a, well, I don't know, a few weeks. There will be a whole different set of plants over here. The uh, Thai constellation is doing very well. I need to do some correcting on its trunk down there. So that's going to get a really big repot. And I'm going to have to very slowly lift that plant up. It was underneath my tree fern all winter until I got fed up with my tree fern and moved it out of my growth space. And I just didn't. That's the problem why you don't want to crowd your plants. Because you can end up 
not seeing things that are right in front of you that are very important. So the trunk on this came off. I didn't know, I didn't realize that one of the ropes had snapped. And so now it's going to take probably at least a year to correct that. I, it's fixable, it just slowly tightened the string on the pole. But this is going to go up onto a whole new pole. That was just there temporarily. I'm gonna put it up on a nice big thick moss pole into a much larger pot and start to <laughs> pull this back up because she's leaning. She's leaning way too much. Yes, I know I could just chop it, but I don't want to. I wanna let it grow up and get nice and tall. The major wheeler honeysuckles just now starting to get going on this trellis over here. Still has a few flowers on it. It's still, I really need to do a lot more cutting back on it. I wanted to let it flower first and it's still flowering. They have some of my favorite flowers in the garden. Are any of these flowers open? Yes, yeah, so you can kind of see the flowers a little bit better there. They have a very tropical looking flower. It reminds me a lot of the Gartenmeister fuchsias, and so that's why I have these over here. I didn't want to cut them back yet. Like I said, I wanted to go ahead and let them flower and do their thing before doing that. So for the time being, for the next few weeks while they're flowering, they just kind of get to go nuts and do whatever they want. I'm okay with it. The hummingbirds appreciate it and I get to enjoy the flowers. I to cut all of that off back here and I'd have to wait a few more months to start seeing the flowers as it grows up along the trellis and it's just, I want to do that. Over here, yeah, I still haven't repotted this. I have to figure something out with the pots. We'll talk about that. I think I came up with a solution to get this hydrangea tree out of here. The other one's doing fine. It's looking good. But they both need to be repotted into something larger. Like I said, I think I have something figured out and I'm gonna get on that. And no, I know this one's dead. It died last year. Got way too much rain in June and it just, the poor thing drowned. But I do have another one to go in its place. Pardon the background noise, the dolphins are noisy. <laughs> back here along this wall this has just become a storage area where i'm moving annuals through as i work with them so there isn't really too much to say about this area i am planning on eventually hopefully being able to get an old stump out of the ground that's up here there's a pine tree stump up there if i can get that out which i think i have a plan on how to do that then I'm going to replant this with probably a green giant or borvitae, arborvata, however you want to say it. And then in the front of this, I'm going to line it with the Asclepius. These are the Asclepius tuberosa the milkweeds. This is a perfect spot for them. Doesn't get heavy irrigation up here, which this type of Asclepius really does prefer. And I already have plants over here for the pollinators. So I'll be able to kind of have a little bit more of a pollinator hedge up here. I thought about maybe putting some ice plants or something in from Delosperm as something to come forward a little bit. Those are all just things I'm thinking about while I'm planning on getting this stump out of here. But I think I came up with a plan. This is something that can't be removed professionally because the wall is here. What I've talked to basically just says, nah, because they can't get the equipment up here. And then if you pull the wrong way, then this wall would come out, which would be a very, very, very big problem. Don't want that to happen. But I'm going to try and dig around it and use a farm jack to slowly lift it out and hopefully have a big enough hole to replant in that area with something for some privacy. Oh, this wind blowing the seeds out of the birch trees right into my eyes. But yeah, this whole area over here, lots of annuals that are ready to get planted up. Hopefully in the next few weeks over here, I have a little folding table. This is a birthday gift and I absolutely love it. It's a bamboo folding table and I've been moving it around with me when I have, when I need to like spread things out and have more room to work with. And this has come in so nifty that I have annuals that I've been moving from plugs and up to larger things just until they're ready to get going. This is the base of my foxtail palm. Planted this up, I don't know, a month or so ago, repotted it. And I put all these annuals down in there and they kind of stood still for a couple weeks, which is normal. And then they've just now started to really take off and do their thing. I have it in kind of an awkward position because I'm using this to actually shade other plants that I've just moved out that need to harden off. So, and like the heliconias and stuff with this cool weather we've been having, they just look like garbage, but they'll be okay. It's once, like I said, once the heat gets here, a lot of the plants that are have been throwing a fit all month are going to explode with new growth and start to look happy again. This is the magnolia planter that was originally over to the side over here in between some other plants. This is going to my front porch. I'm gonna keep it in the backyard during the fall through winter when the tropicals aren't out here. And then the rest of the year it will be 
on my front porch, like I just said. So it has lots of perennials in it and then the alyssum in the front. The purple alyssum that's down here has started to fade a little bit, but I think that that's just, it's just kind of regaining some strength because this also had a row of primulas behind them. And I pulled those out because it was starting to get a little bit too warm for them. They were going downhill, so I pulled them move those to the shade. I put them in pots and moved them around. And so I think they're just kind of adjusting to their roots being slightly disturbed. And then over here, these are the windmill palm planters that I just did in a video or two ago. I think it was two videos ago from this one. These are also going to go on my front porch. I just haven't moved them yet, mostly just because I want to give the impatience a moment to settle in so I could actually show how pretty they look because in the video when I planted them up, they threw a bit of a fit, as they tend to do. So this way there's a slightly better look at them, even though it is incredibly sunny and overexposed. I'm happy that I finally got to do this part of the video because now I can move them because they're in the way of all kinds of things. Okay, so for this next area, I'm gonna have to use some old footage here to start things off. I've had this magnolia tree here for a while and been trying to get rid of it for a while and uh, Finally, someone showed up with a stump grinder and now that's gone and um, I decided to have some fun with the area. You gotta admit, that looks freaking awesome. I've been wanting to get that tree out for such a long time. Oh, I'm so happy that it is finally gone so I can replant this entire garden bed. So I'm going to be moving some plants around over here. This is going to be a big project for really the entire summer. I went ahead and put this Alexander palm here just because I was like, well, why not? I just wanted to have fun with the area. I have a different magnolia that I will be putting in this spot in the fall time, but I was like, you know, for this year, I'm just going to enjoy having this right here. Normally the Alexander palm I would put down there, but I thought this would be a good spot for a few different reasons. One, because it's gotten quite large. This is Keep this in mind if you get an Alexander Balm and you don't live someplace tropical. I'm in zone six if you're new here and didn't know. Toby, what you doing? Having a little swim break? Okay, good for you. I'd say probably six years ago, this Alexander Palm was about, I don't know, seven feet tall, maybe not even six years ago. So it, it they grow quickly and eventually you won't be able to fit them in your house. But I'm lucky enough to live someplace where there's a service here that will come and pick up your really big plants and store them for the winter time in a greenhouse. Just fantastic. Sometimes it doesn't go so well. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. So the uh, palm trees got delivered and this one now resides over here in this garden bed. Let me tell you, getting this over here was very difficult. I'm able to scoot this pot around on the patio without really any issues. You just kind of, you know, twist and move, but this is all sloped. These beds up against my house all come up as a, a berm, basically. It's for drainage. There's drainage along this whole area in here. And um, getting something that weighs this much up a slope like that, not an easy task. Had to trench the area out and scoot it very slowly. Have you ever seen those Easter Island documentaries where they move the moais, those giant moai stone sculptures around on the island because they're trying to, they try and figure out how they pulled that off. That was kind of like that. It was just a very slow scooting process, walking it up this slope and then had to kind of dig it out as I was going, but eventually I got it there. I gotta say, I am very, very happy with this decision. It looks so good over here, especially from in the house. I love seeing it through the garden window and at nighttime there are some lights in here. All of this is going to get concealed. I would have preferred to have gotten the pot painted before I moved it here, but uh, the people with the stump grinders showed up basically out of nowhere. They told me to give them a call on a Monday to see when they could come out and they just showed up on Sunday with the stump grinder. So I was like, okay, do your thing. And then there was a lot of rain in the forecast. So I just did it, but I can put a tarp up and still get a coat of paint on there. Probably just going to paint it black or brown or something like that. So it's not quite as, I mean, this is pretty intense and uh, there will be plants, some plants put in the pot and I'm going to landscape all around that area with annuals. Anything that goes right in front of it's going to have to be annual because the when it gets moved out of here in the fall time, that those plants that go in front of it may not hold up very well. But you can see that it is sunk in the ground a little bit and that's going to keep it from blowing over. So I don't have to worry about that this year, which is really nice because it's gotten big enough where this thing blowing over, that's 
pretty dangerous. That's not safe to have around. If I were to have kept this on my patio, then I would have had to have drilled holes and put anchors in the ground and put wires and things in it. And I really don't want to drill holes on the patio here. Pardon the, I'm retrenching everything, I'm trying to get all the, these trenches dug out for drainage. I have some fresh soil over here, some garden soil, so that I can get going with the planting now that we have a very decent forecast coming up here. And uh, most of what's over here isn't staying here. The orange trees, a little bit unhappy because it's like the first time it's seen sun in a month, but it's staying hydrated and it should be okay. All of these Akubas over here, I ordered these last year with the intention of planting them in front of the skip laurel hedge. Yeah, those were supposed to go down here. Well, you can't really see it. We were just over there. You know what I'm talking about. We just spent a long time down there. Those uh, pedicets have grown so much that that doesn't seem like a practical idea, which I'm actually fine with how this turned out because I look forward to actually using these around the garden bed more because I've been talking about how I want to. There are, you can't see it <laughs> right now, but there actually are a fair amount of perennials in these beds. It just, they're more on the tropical-ish side. They're heat loving plants. So it just takes them a while to wake up and get moving. So all these bikini teenies out front here with the dog toy hanging out in front of them. Those, you know, they just started popping up like I'd say a week and a half ago. Those are going to get very large. I'm probably going to come in and remove any that are towards the front of the garden. I'd like to kind of move them back. They run and move around a lot. They were originally planted several years ago down here, and now they're all the way down here. And that's partially because there was that magnolia tree here that was shading them heavily. So they're moving towards the sun, and then the front of this bed here, the lower you go, the more moisture there is in the soil, because all the moisture, since this is on a slope, all that kind of runs down and then the soil is more moist there. So that's probably their preferred area. But since they have started popping up underneath the bananas over here, the baju bananas, that, that tells me that they're fine and I can go ahead and dig some up and scoot them back. I am also going to divide up this purple pineapple lily here. It needs it. They need to be divided every so often, probably every three to four years. So I'm going to divide that up and move that and to some other areas, work it around this garden bed. Yeah, this bed is going to eventually, it's going to have some nice evergreen interest from the Akubas. So they're going to have to be planted very strategically because they don't like too much sun, especially when it gets really hot outside. They're listed as a shade plant. I've seen them grown in the sun plenty of times. I think a lot of it just has to do with where you live, climate, how much precipitation you get and those sorts of things, the temperatures, but I, they will still have to be tucked around carefully to make sure that they don't cook in the sun. And then uh, I have some dwarf crepe myrtles here that I'm going to be working into some things. There is a spirea in the back that is, I believe it's a double take spirea. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. And I'll be tucking in annuals, mostly sun and patience throughout here. There are going to be a lot of hardy gingers going back over in this area. There's a lot. There's going to be a lot. I'm going to have a lot of fun working with this bed this year. There's a lot of potential. There's just, there's so much room for activities. Look at all that space. I want to make sure that it blends in with this bed that got done a few weeks ago. It doesn't need to blend perfectly, but there are going to be gingers. There's already gingers here. They're starting to come up and get a little bit taller. These are the Hedicium Flaming Torch Butterfly Gingers. There's going to be some on each side. There's already some here. I'll divide them up, move some more over there. And then there are some more that are just starting to wake up on the very end of this berm. So it goes bananas, bananas and gingers, bananas and gingers. No bananas here because they're too close to the door. That, that would just be leaves in the face all the time. But that'll help kind of carry that through. And they're just really pretty plants. You have to take my word for it because they're just just now kind of starting to do their thing and pop up from in front of those ferns. But in a, a few weeks, they're going to be very big. And then come late July into August, maybe even late August, because things are a little bit behind this year, they'll be covered in these beautiful orange flowers that the pollinators love. They're always covered in bees and butterflies and hummingbirds. But as I was saying with the sun and patience, I have the orange and pink sun and patience out front here with the lemon coral sedum, sunset crecia, tradescantia, and the purple wave petunias planted here. Now, I'm not going to do all of that down here. I don't 
really want to. Like I said, I want to work a lot with perennials down there, but I am going to use the sun impatience that I have down here. I want to make sure that there's some of that orange and pink tucked in down there just to kind of pull them together a little bit. It doesn't have to be matchy matchy just because there's the gingers and the bananas all the way through these beds that I think it would be nice to also carry through the pink and the orange and have that nice pop of color. And then this is an area where I may work in some of those purple pineapple lilies. These ferns that are in the front here, those are going to come out. Just the ones in the front, I want to clear up the edge of the slope. So one for drainage, because when there's storms and things like that, a lot of stuff gets tangled up around those ferns that are down front. So I'll pull those out and then uh, there will be some gingers in there that I can pull out too along with that. And those are the ones that I will tuck back here underneath those bananas. I am very happy with how this color scheme is working out over here with the pinks and purples and then that nice green from the lemon coral sedum. I was a little bit worried about the petunias with the amount of rain that we've been having. They were starting to look a little bit sad, but they're doing okay. And now that we've had, <laughs> like, I'd say 20 out of the last 30 days of rain, it's not supposed to rain for the next week, which is amazing, and I'm so excited about that. But uh, the plants aren't used to it, though. This is the first day without rain, and they're like, oh my gosh, give me water. And I watered them this morning, but yeah, they're going to have to adjust to that. It's okay, I'm just, you know, doing my best to make sure they stay watered. The pool pots, can we, is that, you, you see that? Probably not. Somewhat of a better look. I'm going to have to go all the way around these for you to see all the flowers anyways, but these just got potted up about a week and a half ago. You can see the vistas. There's Supertunia Vista Paradise and Supertunia Vista Silverberry. As I expected, much more vigorous than the Supertunia Honey and the Purple Wave Petunia. That's why I made sure to keep them spaced out from each other so that the vistas can have their side of the pot and the ones that maybe aren't going to grow as strong can have sort of a separate area. And I love, my favorite thing about these are these Cordelin Fruticasas. They make me so happy. They are so cute. They have that beautiful variegation along the edges. The lighting, not great, I'm sorry. Overall, these are planters that are just, they've been making me happy. And I know that when I did this video, I kept things really up close and tight. And that was because I was trying to hide. I didn't want everybody to see. I wanted it to be a surprise that that magnolia was gone that I'd gotten that Alexander palm over there. And I had a lot of uh, other plants kind of scattered about over there that were acclimating to the sun. Those have been moved and the area is more clear now. So there's a full frame shot of those. The Adenidia palms themselves are recovering nicely from that unexpected cold that they went through about a month or so ago. They're putting out new fronds and like said, within like a month or so, I don't think that any of that damage wouldn't be visible anymore because once the heat arrives and I have these on drip, keep them fertilized really well, they grow very, very, very quickly. So once those flush out with new foliage, they're going to look pretty nice. You can see the stuff that's in there is actually fairly shaded from the foliage on those Adenidia palms, which is nice. They get really bright, intense morning light, but then in the afternoon when things get really intense out here, when you have plants on pavement like this, it, things get so hot. Where I live, it's not unusual to have summer temperatures in the upper 90s and then into the triple digits with pretty intense humidity. And then you factor in the pavement underneath them, dark pavement, it can cook things. That's never been an issue with me for petunias, but there are other plants like I one year tried Creeping Jenny on these just because that beautiful Creeping Jenny foliage on these blue pots, it's so pretty, but no, nah, that was not doable. They cooked to a crisp by the time June came around. It was just too much for them. Creeping Jennies can take a decent amount of sun, but like I said, that just wasn't for them. Over here, there's the hanging basket that got put together a few videos ago. I'm giving this like one more week to establish itself before I go ahead and hang it up. I had to do a lot of work with their roots to get them into the sides of the pot, so I want to make sure those establish themselves very well. This is Mr. Freckles, Croton, Croton, or it's just Freckles. I call it Mr. Freckles. This is another plant that needs a repot. It's one of my favorites. Did wonderfully over the winter. Didn't skip a beat inside in the grow space. Did just fine. Eureka Palms looking good. Looking the same as it has this entire time. I have a ginger over here I'm about to repot, so that's it's looking a little scraggly because it's sitting in more sun than I would typically have it in, so I need to get on top of that. Now, over here is a fall planter that was done last year, and it is coming back beautifully. This has 
perennials in it. You can see there's some sea oats back here, some ivy, some helianthus, and some other things. I can't remember everything that was in there. It was nice because it's perennials, so I'm going to tuck this back into my vegetable garden for a while, and then uh, when it is fall time, I'll pull it back out and it can be part of the fall decor. Right now it's just sitting on the edge of the hot tub because the hot tub's broken, so I'm <laughs> utilizing every bit of space I have out here, just getting things acclimated into the sun. What is that, Tuck? What is that? Oh, I didn't mean there's some... No, no one's here. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I think he thinks that there's company. I just... He was looking over at the neighbor's mowers up there making all kinds of noise. One more noise, and I said, oops. The way that I have this garden bed sloped with the gravel and those seashells that are there, I'm gonna carry that through the entire bed, all the way around that corner, or that slope, turn, curve, it's a curve. All the way around that curve, over through everywhere else. I have to do that every couple years. Over time, things just kind of wash down and erode and you have to dig it back up. I have to dig it back up every year, but as far as like getting new gravel and everything in there, that's something that I'm going to try and get done probably next week because it looks like the weather is going to be mild. Hey, Tuck. You say hi to everybody? How you doing, bud? How you doing? You're such a good boy. You're so happy. It's so nice to see you. Barely was in frame. It's a few hours later. I decided to let the sun kind of move out of the way a little bit. So it'd be a little bit easier to see things. And um, it, literally the second I came out the door, lawnmowers and leaf blowers started in three different yards. Isn't that great timing? It's fine. Those are just the sounds of being outdoors. It's okay. It's what I keep telling myself. Toby, you stay out of that. What are you sniffing down there, huh? What do you smell? So anyways, here's a better shot of those pool pots without the sun blazing down on top of them. You can kind of get a better look at what those look like. The colors are blending together nicely. Ginger, of course, looks better without its foliage all cupped up and hiding from the sun. That won't be as bad as these banana trees start to flush out. But this ginger right here, this is an Alpinia Zerimba uh, Variegata. I'm not going to be keeping that here anyways. That's just a placeholder for something else that's hardy and perennial here that looks somewhat similar. I just kind of set it there because I wanted to get an idea of some textures and colors. And uh, I like I like how that looks a lot. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to keep it there though. I, mean, I guess I could. But no, I already have a plant on the way in the mail that's going to go in that spot that'll come back every year. That would make more sense to use in that spot. Then over here, this whole area all the way over, this is where I've been putting in most of my work this past week when I have been able to come outside and get some things done. This is the other palm tree I had stored with that company that stores the big one. This is how they brought that back to me. I'd say that needs a repot. I am disappointed with how well they took care of it and be talking to the company about that at a different time but what i wanted to talk about was this pot so earlier in the video i talked about those hydrangea trees and how they need to be repotted i talked about this in the last garden tour as well and uh, getting two really big ceramic pots it would just cost an absolute fortune and i already have this pot right here and uh, this adenidia palm needs to be repotted and i have a gigantic plastic pot that i can put this adenidia palm in so this pot right here, it is plastic, but I think it looks okay for being a plastic pot. I can get another one of these off Amazon for really cheap, considering the size. Anyways, much cheaper than I could anything that's ceramic. So it just makes the most sense to me to go ahead and move this Edinity Palm into this larger pot and then get another one of these pots for much, much, much less money than it would cost to buy two very large ceramic pots and use those for the hydrangea trees. That was something that I hadn't quite gotten to when talking about this area that I planted up in last week's vlog. Now where I left off in the vlog, I had mentioned that I would plant up the center of these and get back to that this week for this video. And so here's what I did in this planter. Put two garden meister fuchsias in the center there in the back. Did I say fuchsias? Fuchsias. A lemon coral sedum coming over the front here. And then I just toss in a couple of purple lobularias alyssum because I really like the smell. I don't think they really go well in this though, so I'm probably going to take those out. Oh, and then there are a couple of justicias, justicias, tucked in the back there. Here's the tag on those justicias. The variety is called Fruit Cocktail. They have a really cute little yellowish green bract that has these fun little pink flowers that come out along the sides. So everything over here 
should be okay together. This is going to get a lot of morning sun and then around the early afternoon this entire area will start to get filtered light and it'll be shaded throughout the rest of the day. And uh, I was thinking that the New Guinean patients would probably do well in here because of that. Aren't those beautiful? The variety of these New Guinean patients here is called Painted Paradise Orange Improved and that the variegation on them is just beautiful. Now, I'm not done with this area by any means. Just kind of getting started and sort of tucking things in and playing around with them as I feel like it. But for the most part, I really like the direction this is going. The Bird of Paradise are doing very well. They've been popping out new leaves like crazy. I think that the two that are opening right now will make three new leaves since I repotted this really just a few weeks ago. So it's responded very well to getting into a new pot. Queen Palm also doing well. Not much to report there. You know, I just repotted this one last week, so it's not much to say. I have a lot going on with bromeliads and other projects and things that will all be in future videos. I have a pile of orchids over here that I'm trying to keep shaded. I'm not ready to move those into the sun. Begonias over here gorgeous. Isn't that a beautiful caladium? It's one of the ones from Proven Winners, the Lemon Blush. It's one of the caladiums for shade, and I think that it just has the cutest foliage. I like how the foliage is kind of short and squat, and the heart shapes that's on the foliage on these is just adorable because they're more round, not quite as sharp and strong and vertical. And here's that fountain area. This is all going to get redone here in the next week or so and I'm looking forward to that. I usually tuck a lot of my house plants and other tropicals around this area, the shade loving ones, but like I mentioned before they're still acclimating to the sun. It's not very sunny over here but it does get pretty strong morning sun so they need to adjust for a little while. Some of them have already come out. You can see my pink princess is not doing great because it keeps putting out pink leaves and I keep cutting them off. I need to make a cut down lower so it will stop doing that. All pink foliage is no good on those. There's veggie garden. Not much throughout the veggie garden. We'll talk about that in another video. I'm still getting moving on that one. I'm actually really far behind. My yucca recurvifolia, the soft leaf yucca, that's back here. It's kind of tucked away and hard to see. I suppose that's a little bit better. This is a yuck I talked about in a video a couple years ago and it finally got big enough that I was able to clean off some of its trunk, which I was pretty excited about because I think these look a lot nicer when you can see some of their smooth trunk. That will turn brown. I just cleaned that off yesterday. They're a zone seven and up, so I've been waiting a few years before I move this into the ground. I have another one just to let it sit out a little bit longer every single fall and winter and let it feel more and more cold. But this winter was so mild that that was outside all winter, had no problems at all. So maybe this year I might go ahead and pop it in the ground. I'm not sure. I have to think about it a little bit. I know where it's going to go. So it would be nice to go ahead and fill that spot in with them, finally. But just look at this cute little, this has got a cute little trunk. I get excited about things that you guys probably don't care about, I'm sorry. Like, I'm very self-conscious about how much time I spent talking about my skip laurels. <laughs> hey, we all get excited about different things, that's okay. Oh, these pots down here with the two mule palms in them, I haven't potted those up with anything yet because uh, they already have some plants in them from last year that are starting to come up. There was the Tretiscantia pelleta in those and some lemon coral sedum. Those are all coming back from last year. I'm still waiting to see how much vigor those have from last year before I move on and decide what exactly I want to put in those. I already have an idea, but I also would prefer that if there's something in those pots, it's going to be perennial and come back every year to let that do its thing. I don't want to dig them up. There's the other yucca back there. I have a big brute can in the corner here. I'm using that to mix some fertilizer. I haven't, it's rained so much. I haven't done any liquid fertilizing this month. Look at how great the lavender is doing. It's a little bit thirsty. And by a little bit, I mean, it's pretty darn thirsty. Like I was saying, the plants got so used to the nice mild weather and constant rain that I think just a few hours without being moist, they're just like, um, I don't know, what is this life? Give me water. I need water now. Yeah, lots of fun projects. The thing with the furniture down there, I was going to pick all that up and move it and stack it anyways, because you could see when I was over there, that whole area needs to be scrubbed and cleaned up like, very badly. And I need to trench out that berm that's right there. That entire berm is starting to like creep over onto the patio. So that just like I was talking about with the garden beds over here, how I dig that out, I have to do the same thing down there. So no, I'm not going to leave those stacked like that. I will go ahead and probably order some new cushions to put on them because I've scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed and those stains don't seem to want to come off. There are some other things I could try, but it would probably destroy the colors that are already there. Ooh, could tie dye them, bleach dye them. That might be fun. And 
really unnecessary. I won't do that. Never mind. That was a bad idea. Oh, and the last thing. Here are the planters from the Talavera video, and they are doing very well. I had them kind of sheltered over here because it was just raining nonstop. The one with the heliconia in it isn't looking anywhere near as good because it just hasn't been hot enough for the heliconias. But yeah, a couple weeks, things are going to warm up and the heliconias will take off. They'll be totally fine. And I think that's going to do it. I have a lot to do out here and I'm looking forward to doing it. I'm going to get all my orchids, my vandacious orchids hung up back here. I have a lot of bromeliads to play with and then I'm going to get this tropical area set up and work on my edible garden a little bit and the repotting. So I've been talking about it. Y'all know, there's plenty to do. Like I said, infinite canvas, never done painting in a garden. I'm so glad you came outside, Tucker. You slept all day. I was worried you weren't going to show up for the video. Why you like to go right where nobody can see you? Things are growing and taking off and doing wonderfully. This is just the very beginning of the season. So it's not even summer yet. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on out here this year. That being said, I did want to mention I'm probably going to take off next week from the YouTube. I'm going to do my summer vacation at home, summer staycation, and uh, so I won't be filming videos or anything like that, but everything will be back up to normal in the second week of June. So I hope everybody is doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's going beautifully for you. I feel kind of weird saying that considering the extreme vast amounts of things that are going on right now but it is true i hope everybody's doing well in spite of everything everybody's hanging in there comment down below say hi i love talking to everybody what's going on in your gardens you have some fun projects going on i know a lot of people are just getting going with their veggies and everything which is exciting like i said i'm very behind on that i'm gonna have, that's gonna be a big thing i have to do next week or the veggies distributing mulch and moving the rest of the plants out all i have left in there are the it's mostly just plants that really, really don't like the cold or plants that I'm really protected of, protected? Plants that I'm very protective of, like my alocasias. So those haven't come out yet, but for the most part, everything big is out. It's just lots of little things. It's that time of night, isn't it, Tucker? Right, right in the evening, the noceums, the little midge flies start coming out and I'm being eaten alive. So I'm actually gonna shut up now and go. I have all my social media linked down below, you know, the whole YouTube drill. If you like the video, it makes a big difference for the channel and I appreciate it. Subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. I upload multiple times a week, usually, except not next week. And hit that notification bell, let you know when new videos come out. All right, as always, and most important, everybody keep on growing bye bye you lick the lens you just lick anything that gets put in your face don't you Tucker you such a good boy you such a good Tucker